I'm, I'm really excited about this message. So I'm going to start by apologizing for you that I'm going to offend this morning. I always like to start like that. We started a series called, you know, like Hot Seats. Man, the seat is really hot. The topics that we've been tackling. Three weeks ago, if you're, if you're new here and you're online, the pastor of this church is Daniel Kellogg. And he started a series on Father's Day about how God has called the men to lead. Can we give it up for the men in the house? A lot of people get offended. You know, there's they, they, they a movement out there that says, if the men can bench 100 women, let's bench 200. I, I'm sorry. The reason we're doing this is there's always a ditch on every end. But I want to say this, to open your heart today to hear what the Bible says. Not my opinion. I have no opinion in this. According to people, I shouldn't even be speaking because I'm a woman. So I don't have an opinion on this. I want to go with what the book says. So before you walk out, I want you to hear me out. Because we're in the last days. And I know what Daniel was speaking. We want to be a healthy church. We want to be a church that does not just speak what we want, but we want to come to the foundation. Our foundation is the word of God and that settles it. And everything I say today, please don't take my word for it. Please don't. Go home and do your homework. Go read the Bible. Talk to people that you respect and say, this is in the Bible. What does it mean? Because we are going to be tackling some things today. When Daniel spoke three weeks ago, they had a meeting. And in the meeting, they were saying, oh, God has called the man to be a watchman. But the woman he's called as a helper. And Daniel said, everybody in the meeting were uncomfortable with the word helper. And I'm thinking, I wish I was in that meeting. I love to help people. I'm a helper. But people were uncomfortable with a word that I believe the culture has made us look down on. When you say helper, all of a sudden there's an imagination in your brain. She's in the kitchen with an apron making biscuits and gravy. That's not what it means. Okay? I know some men in this room like Reese, Ross, they cook better than any of the women here. Come on. So please don't stereotype me. If you, if you ask me to make food for you, I always say bring the food when you come. Because sometimes it doesn't pan out the way I planned it. So today I want to break all our, our theology and say let's throw our theology away and come back to the word of God. What does God say? And then we invite the Holy Spirit. He's already here to begin to wrestle in our heart with the wounds so that he can heal it. So that we can see from the lenses of what God says. Before I, before I pray, I want to say, I am not speaking on this topic without first knowing that there are people in this room that have been hurt by leadership. So when you hear the word helper, submit, you have a picture of an abusive man in your life. And I'm sorry. If that man was a real man, he would have taken care of you. Actually, he was a boy. Because the scripture does not talk to boys. God talks to men. And a man is a man that will love his wife like he loves himself. And so if there's a guy that has hurt you and he's been selfish, boys, it's time to man up. Stop playing video games and start loving your wives. I want to establish again, I'm going to be preaching from the Bible. And it's the word of God. And if you don't like it, come back and hear Daniel. He'll hug you. But I'm not here to hug. I'm here with a spanking spoon. Let us pray. <laughs> Father, Lord, we say thank you for your presence already. Lord, you're already moving here. Thank you for the worship team. 
Thank you for the, the people that come here early every time. What is happening here is not because of when we show up. It's the people that have been coming during the week praying for your presence. Father, thank you for the people that no one knows their names. They clean this place every week. Thank you for the sound people, the tech people, the people at the info table. Father, the, the kids area, the kingdom people. People that may, might never stand on a stage, but they are standing on the greatest stage in history, the stage of the king. Father, I want to honor them today. Thank you so much for each and everyone that's here, Lord. And I want to ask you, Lord, have your way. Father, let it not be my opinion. Holy Spirit, breathe on your word this morning. In Jesus' name, everybody says. So can we give it up for Bobby? So I, I, I wanted to just say, during the week, we meet here and we spend time worshiping the king. So if you want to hear more of Bobby's piano playing, <laughs> this week we're meeting on Monday. And even though Thursday is the 4th of July, we're going to meet from noon till 4. So if you're doing nothing, I have something for you to do. Come join us and honor the King of Kings. So yeah, thank you. So today, I, I really want to talk to you on our hot seat today about the helper controversy. I believe that's a controversy. Because when we hear this word, there are words that make us feel angry when you hear the word helper. All of a sudden, everybody's head is turning. Or you hear the word, the man is the head. What do you mean? Yeah, he is. We didn't make it up. Submit. The Bible says, submit to one another. But people that have been hurt by bad leadership, when they hear the word submit, they're like, I am not submitting to anybody. Then we have the word leader and unity. All these words always brings controversy in the issue of women. So today I'm going to break it down to what the Lord says. I'm going to go to Genesis 1, 27 to 28. And this is what he said. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Can you say the next two words? Male and, hello. It didn't say God created male, period. Let's move on. Male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. He didn't just bless the man. Neither did he just bless the woman. The Bible says God blessed them. And said, be fruitful and multiply. If you know biology, men cannot multiply without women. So God was not saying to the man, you be fruitful and multiply. The only thing he will multiply is, you know men, they're always building something. If God had left men by themselves, we will have nice houses all over, but there will be no kids. <laughs> men are builders. And God knew they needed women. So he said, Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. God did not give that mandate to men or women. He gave it to men and women. That's, that's in the beginning. But the, the next thing I want to say is that God created us in his image. When you see a man and you see a woman, and by the way, he only created male and female. And he created them in his image. So when you see a woman, she looks like God. When you see a man, he looks like God. Because when you see his creation, he created them in his image. So they all have equal value. That's what Daniel said three weeks ago. They all have equal value. So we don't need to prove our words. When I, when I get up, I don't need to tell you what I'm worth because Jesus already told me what I'm worth. But God gave a mandate because God is a God of order. He made Adam first. So Adam is number one, period. That's God's order. And after he created Adam, then he made Eve. Our culture wants to change the order. 
But the Bible will not change because the culture is feeling funky. The, the Bible is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So we don't need to look at the culture to tell us who we are. We need to look at God who has already told us who we already are. Genesis 2, 7 and 8. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostril, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. Let me give you a preview. God made the mountains. He made, the, he made animals. He said it was good. God made the, the, the trees. He said it was good. God made the, the, the fish and the ocean. He said it was good. But there was only one thing God said was not good. It was when he created man. He said it's not good that man is alone. God blessed everything, but when he created man, he said it was not complete. So he said, he thought that he had to create a woman because it was not good for the man to be alone. Come on, all you guys, it's not good for you to be alone. We know what you do when you're alone. All your imaginations are really wild. Video games and all, you know that. So after creation, the, the, the Lord... He said something was wrong and he decided to write it. And that's what he did in Genesis 2, 18. Then the Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I'll make a helper who is just right for him. Stop. This was the word that people were having problem with. God says, I will make a helper. He didn't stop there. He said, I'll make a helper that's just right for him. In verse 21, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's rib and closed, and, and closed up, up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. At last the man exclaimed, this one is bone from my bone, flesh from my flesh, and she will be called what? God, God made that happen. Because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united as one. You see, when God decided to make Eve, he didn't do it from the dust of the earth again. No. He did surgery. And out of Adam, he took out one rib and made a woman. So guys, if you want your rib back, I have the way you get it. You can't get the rib back. You get a wife. You get a woman. That's how it works. Because when he took your rib, he turned your rib into something, and she became a woman. So some people, oh, I don't want her problem. No, you got her. Good, bad, and ugly, she's yours. So if you're married to someone, you should have seen that coming up before you got married. But when you get married, it's still dead to us part. You got her. When God created Eve and Adam, the first person Adam saw. Who do you think Adam saw the first time God created him? Who was the first person Adam saw? God. Who was the first person Eve saw? God. So the first relationship we must have is a relationship with our creator. So every single person in this room, if you don't have a partner yet, if you don't have a husband yet, hey, guess what? You have a creator that loves you. And don't, be, don't feel like you need to rush. <laughs> Isaiah 54 verse 5, for your creator will be your husband. So if you're here, maybe a divorce happened. Maybe you're single, you're like, man, I'm 30 and the guy has not come. Let me tell you something, it's not a sin. God is your creator, he wants to be your husband. Because before you met, before I met Ross, I had a relationship with Jesus. Before Ross met me, he had a relationship with Jesus. And before you find the perfect Mr. Right, you must have a relationship with your creator. He said, for your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. He's your redeemer, the holy one of Israel, the God of all the earth. Take heart. You're not alone. He wants to be your husband. He wants to take care of you. To the people that are single today, I just want to say there's room for you in the kingdom of God. 
the word helper. That word is the one I want to tackle today. I don't want you to look at the word helper from the way you've always looked at it, laundry and all those. I want you to see the word helper, what it means. In the, in the Hebrew, the word originally means bringing strength into a situation. That's the word helper. Because the helper comes to help the one that needs help. So God has given the husband the mandate. Let me tell you, it's not the woman's mandate. The mandate was given to the husband to be the watchman over his family. Now the job of the helper is to come and help him finish the mandate that God has given to him. And the job of the helper is to build him up and not tear him down. Because sometimes they don't know who they are at that time. And our job is to speak who they are to them in that moment. That's the word of the helper. But before you think that the word helper means someone inferior, let's look at Exodus 18.4. The second son was named Eliezer, for Moses had said, the God of my ancestor was my, he rescued me from the sword of Pharaoh. Moses calls God his helper. Let's look at this, Psalms 54, verse 4. But God is my, the Lord keeps me alive. Hebrews 13, 6. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? John 14 describes the Holy Spirit. But the, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to you your remembrance all things that I said to you. So do you know that the helper is not inferior? The helper is not called to sit down and just be in the kitchen making biscuits. The helper is called to help teach, to help comfort, to help raise up, to help build up. The helper is not just someone that God called and said, now you're the helper, sit in the kitchen all the days of your life. The helpers are all over. You see them in the tech rooms. You see them in the hospitals. You see them in the classrooms. They are not confined only to the home. Come on. So God being called the helper is not an inferior position. Because if you think when God said the woman should be the helper fit for the man, it's inferior. You are saying your theology is that God is inferior. And you are saying that the Holy Spirit is inferior to the Godhead. But I want to tell you the Holy Spirit, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are equal God. I want to show you this. Just imagine it's a million dollars. Josh gave it to me today, it's a million dollars. Let's look at this and say this is the helper's value, a million dollars. God said the helper is valued at a million dollars. Now what if the helper is crushed? Does that change the value? Does it? What if I took the helper and I stomped her on the ground? Does that change her value? Because in God's eye, she is made in his image, and she is the same no matter what. A lot of people tell me, well, when sin came into the world, God changed his plan. Um, no. When sin came into the world, it was a detour. It was a detour. But God is on mission. And when he, his mission is, he created men and women, children in his image. That's his mission. And no matter what the enemy did in the garden, God decided that he had a plan and he was going to use a woman. Let me tell you what God said. After the, the, the sin in the garden, God told the serpent, I have a plan and I'm going to crush you. 
And I'm not going to just come and crush you. I'm going to use a woman. The seed of the woman. When she has a seed, his name will be Jesus Christ. And out of that seed, I'm going to crush you. And my plan will be back on mission. <laughs> Genesis 3.15. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman. And between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head but you will strike his heels. God was saying to the enemy, you thought you stopped my plan, but I'm going to use a woman, and out of her we come an offspring, and out of that offspring, he will come to the world, he will go to the cross, and when he gets to the cross, he will not just die on the cross, on the third day he will rise up, and when he rises up, there will be sons and daughters all over, serving the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus came to restore the value of humanity. A culture that does not value humanity is a culture that you should, you should be sorry for. A church that does not value the place of everybody is a church that you should be sorry for. But according to Jesus, every man, every woman, every child, every, everybody has value and we are going to follow the mandate of God. When Jesus came, when he would preach on the mountains, they would count. They would say there were 5,000 men, but we didn't count the women and the children. I'm like, what? Because they didn't have value. They didn't have value. They would count the men, but they never counted the women. But Jesus was saying, that's not my plan. When, woman, when there was a woman at the well, I've, I've preached on her. The woman of Samaria, she was at the well. They said, G the, the rabbi says they will never teach women. Jesus sat at the well to teach a woman. He told her about the living water, the Holy Spirit that's coming. You know what this woman did? She became a helper for Jesus. After she heard Jesus, she went back into all Samaria and told everybody, come and meet this man that told ev me everything about me. And do you know what happened because of this woman, the helper? The greatest revival in a city happened during the time of Jesus. He used a woman. He taught the woman, but then he used her to bring revival. Don't tell me God does not use sons and daughters. And another story that I want to bring about why God is back on mandate. It's for everybody, male and female. Every time I hear about the day of Pentecost, people will tell me, Oh, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit fell on the 12 disciples. I'm like, are you reading your Bible? Where does it say it fell on the 12 disciples? There were 500 men and women and children all together. God said, go into the upper room and wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. 380 said, I'm not going to wait. How long am I supposed to wait? I have my life. They walked away. But there were 120 people that went to the upper room. And let me tell you what happened on that night in Acts 1. When they arrived, they went to the, to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, I'm not going to say that name, Matthew, James, John, and Simon, and Judas. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer. Along with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Was she the only woman? No, no, let's check. Several other and the brother of Jesus. Whoa! I don't think on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit says, I'm coming. I'm coming with my fire. Whoa, there are women in the room. I cannot come anymore. I need to go somewhere else. I told you I'm bringing you back to the Bible. If you don't like it, take it up with God. I'm just reading the word. Where is it that we came with the theology that women don't have a place, that their place is in the kitchen, when the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, the first time the Holy Spirit is coming down, he's making his grand entrance, and when he comes in, there were men, women, and I believe there were children waiting for the power of the Holy Spirit. And when he came, he moved on them with fire. Yeah. 
I think that light came from the pit of hell. Because the enemy knows what will happen when men, women, and children come. It's kingdom advancement, and the gates of hell cannot stop us. That's what happened in the book of Acts. That was the first time that the Holy Spirit showed up. There were men, women, and children. They were all praying, 120 of them. And the Holy Spirit did not discriminate. He came in with a plan. And the plan was, I will pour out my spirit upon all of them. One of my favorite scripture, because I, I feel like we need to come back to honor. Honor. Every time I hear nowadays, nothing against the youth, you guys are cool. You look better than us sometimes. People say, the next move of God is coming through the youth. They lie to you. The next move of God is coming to the young people. They lie to you. God is a generational God. He doesn't use one and abandon the other. Actually, he uses all the generations. So if you're sitting here and you think your time is up, as long as you have breath and as long as you're sitting here, God is still going to use you for the kingdom of God. He uses all. We need each other. We're all in this together. Don't buy the lie that your time is up. Let the young people do it. Young people, you have energy, but you have not seen anything. I'm ready to take you. He said, we'll be like little children. I might be older, but in my mind, I'm a little child in the hands of God, and I'm not going to miss the next move of God. But you don't have to believe me. Let's see what Joel 2 says. This is one of my favorite scripture. This is what I tell the people that says, well, women, you know. I'm like, have you read the Bible? Well, if you haven't, I have it memorized. I'll tell you. Joel 2, 28 to 29. Then after doing all these things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. All what? All people. All people. I hope you're hearing that right now. All people. If there are theologies that have crippled you, I hope it breaks today. All people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. That means they will say the word of God. Sons and daughters, you will prophesy. He said, your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see vision. Let me tell you something. If you're an old person in this room, an old man or woman, welcome to the club. God picked Abraham when he was 75 and you're not done yet. The old men and women like us, we're dreaming dreams. The young kids, vision, young men and women. You're not too young to have visions. God is giving you a picture of what he's about to do, but you can't do it alone. You need to take your vision and give it to the old people, and together it becomes dynamite. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on servants, men and women alike. God is saying, let me tell you how this is going to roll. Everybody's getting the Holy Spirit. You don't need a priest. You don't need a falake. You don't need a Daniel to, to go talk to God. You know what? When Jesus died, the curtain was open. We all have access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You don't need me. You have him. So no one is disqualified because of Jesus. As long as you give your life to Jesus and you're born again, I'm talking about you. And if you're not born again at the end of the service, you better be. Because Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Don't believe the junk that says all roads lead to heaven. There's only one way. And I'm not compromising on that. I'm going to invite the worship team to come up. Together, we are a force to be reckoned with. Together, we are a force to be reckoned with. So today, what is the controversy today? I'll tell you what it is. The controversy is the word helper. There are women in this church in Awaken that if 
they don't do what they do, this church is going to fall apart. I, there's so many. I, I, I was trying to put a list together, and I was like, oh, my goodness. They're like 100. Women, women, you guys are so amazing. Can we give it up? Yeah. How do you juggle taking care of your kids and being in church almost every day? There are men in this room that have sacrificed so that their wives can be here. They provide for their family so that their wives can have time to be able to do what they do here. Can we give it up for the men? They are young. We have young adults in this church. I see them. They could be anywhere, but they want to come and be in the presence of God. I'm like, what happened to you guys? Do you have friends? And the only friend they have is Jesus. They're here on Monday, whether there's nobody here or not, I mean on Thursday, and they're here worshiping the King. And our Thursday worship is not one hour, two hours. Sometimes we're here for five, six hours. And these guys stay in the presence, just telling him how much they love him. Can we give it up for our young adults? We have young kids in this place. They're already mighty warriors. That's why I love our kids' programs. We're not babysitting your kids. We're raising up arrows in the hands of God. When they pray for you, oh my goodness. I remember Reese's kids. We were doing Bible study and they stood there. Worship began. Their parents, Reese and Alicia were doing worship. And I was at the back with their kids and their loud voice worshiping God. They didn't care who was there. They knew the king showed up. And who cares about you guys? They were just singing. And I'm like, how old are these kids? We have kids there that they will go after lions because they know who's with them. We have a youth. They're on fire. They'll go against any brick wall. Even if it's not going to budge, they will hit it. Did you hear what Joel said? In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I start thinking of the women that have impacted my life. Women in this church that if they didn't show up, don't come. There'll be garbage everywhere. We have Jen Burlingham, Jessica Kellogg, Jesse, Wonder. You see Wonder when you're coming. Kathy Anderson. If you're a woman here, yeah, you know she's, she's the woman's pastor. She will pray for you till thy kingdom come. Chelsea, Ali, she makes a lot of creativity. But you will never know her. You remember me. But I have nothing to do with this. I just show up and preach. Hannah, Kimi, Jan. Den- you can be clapping. Dene. We have Bonnie. She's here praying for the chairs. We have Diana, Adi, and Petra. We have Ellen, Debbie, Katniss, Abby, Kelly, Lucinda. The list goes on and on and on. And when you talk to these women and you say, wow, you're helping. They're not offenders. Why did you come here, help her? No, their eyes are focused on the king. And everything they do is for him. And they don't feel lesser because they are helping. Actually, they are lifting up their king, Jesus. I wanted this this message to never leave you. Ladies, if you've been told that all you're good for is to help, I want to tell you, there are many things you do, and I want to honor you today. You not only help, you, you, men, they, they don't have babies. You carry a human in your body. That's powerful. Men don't have periods. You do. I know, sorry for being gross. I just want to land the plane. You're powerful humans, and your children are blessed. Because of you. 
So I'm going to read Joel 2 again. And this is my movement. Then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. If you're a son or a daughter in the room, please stand up. Stand up if you're a son or a daughter. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. If you're an old man or a young man, can you get up and woman? I'm talking to you. In those days, I'll part my spirit, even on servants. So if you're here, you're like, oh, I, I only serve. Stand up. Look around you. Did God leave anybody out? Because everyone is included here. Sons, daughters, those are the only two genders God made. And they're here. Right? Oh, I'm too old. He said the old men and the young ones. There's no excuse. We're all here. If you look around, we've all been called for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And God is saying right now, I've called you because you have value and you are made in my image. That's what God is saying. So there's no excuse. So we're going to do something. You've taken a stand. I believe God wants to commission you. I believe that God wants to, to tell you who you are. I believe that God wants to send you out where He pours His Spirit on you. Wherever you go, you carry the Holy Spirit. Whether you're at your job, when you show up, you come in with the power of the Holy Spirit. Whether you're at home with your children, you carry the Holy Spirit. So right now, everybody, let's lift our hands to the King. a picture in the garden God put Adam in a deep sleep and from his side he took out a rib and created a woman 2,000 and something years ago when Jesus was on the cross his side was pierced and blood and water gushed out and out of his side the father created a bride and the bride is called the church. She is his bride, male and female. And God has called the bride to help him advance the kingdom. So right now, I'm just going to ask the Lord to begin to touch our hearts. 
to begin to heal wounds some of us we hate the word submit or the head or the helper because we've had wounds in our life somebody has hurt us and because of that it's hard to submit to one another so I'm just gonna invite the Holy Spirit to begin to do his work right now so just stand here with me as God is moving in our hearts right now exposing what needs healing and touching those parts